Let me be very clear. The thing that brings real shame on Western Europe is politicians letting mentally deranged violent thugs from other countries wander in and commit violent crimes. Not how ordinary members of the public respond to those crimes. But I am going to say this now and get it out of the way, and I also want to be equally clear on this. I do not condone the torching of a migrant hotel or general looting, and I certainly do not condone genuine racism. Now, there didn't seem to be too much media outrage when there were those mostly peaceful protests after George Floyd's death and there has been a near-total mainstream media blackout of the reality of the utter hate on display at some of the pro-Palestine marches. But yesterday in Ireland, a man believed, widely reported, to be an Algerian allegedly stabbed multiple people, including children. After years and years of being ignored over their fears about mass migration and illegal immigration, the people of Dublin said enough is enough and they took to the streets. Now, clearly, there was some incredibly unsavoury behaviour there. But for me, the reaction to that behaviour tells you exactly why they kicked off like they did. Immediately, the police and media called them far right and then the Irish leader, Leo Varadkar, who looks like the kind of man who still sucks his thumb when nobody's watching, expressed more outrage at the public than he did about a man who allegedly stabbed kids in his capital city. Yesterday evening, some people decided that the best way to respond to this terrible attack was to take to the streets of Dublin and try to terrify, intimidate, loot and destroy. Their first reaction to a five-year-old child being stabbed was to burn our city, attack its businesses and assault our Gardaí. These people claim to be defending Irish citizens yet they put in danger the newest and most vulnerable and most innocent people. Those involved brought shame on Dublin, brought shame on Ireland, and brought shame on their families and themselves. Why do we think he did that? Well, I think because it gets him off the hook. It shifts the focus onto the protesters and away from the root cause of why people are absolutely livid. Because idiots like him, idiots right across Europe, idiots in Downing Street have betrayed people when they sing, say things like, we must come together and not let hate win, what these calculating narcissistic individuals are really saying is, please don't hate me for the decisions that I've made. They've desecrated the very notion of a nation state. They've systematically ignored democratic vote after democratic vote. They've compromised the safety of their citizens. They've then demonised those citizens. They've used the media to help them do it. And when people die or get hurt as a result of their decisions, they will either try to pass restrictions that mean people like me can't report on it, which does happen and has happened, or they'll try to distract you by demonising the people who are very angry about it. But the reality is, in my view, it's their fault. When incidents like this happen, I think it's the fault of political leaders for allowing situations like this to occur. But they can't call everyone far right, not everyone. As GB News regular and Telegraph columnist Alison Pearson tweeted, in July, middle-aged Irish women were protesting in Dublin, about 60 undocumented asylum seekers in their community. They were angry when they were accused of racism. The women said they were trying to keep their daughters and granddaughters safe. Women's and children's safety is far more important than maintaining the lie that allowing young males from very different cultures into a Western society does not pose any dangers to women. It just does. Saying so should not make you racist. Blame the government that's allow it to happen. Those are her words, of course. When you lose the middle-aged women, when you rile them up, it's game over, isn't it? The genie is out of the bottle. Now, in Argentina, a maverick anti-establishment bloke has just won. In the Netherlands, Gert Wilders, a man who wants to ban mosques, has won. Italy's gone to the right. The AFD in Germany is on the charge. Marine Le Pen has support amongst the youth in France. Victor Orban, well, he's got a grip on Hungary. I mean, I could go on, clearly. Divisions have massively opened up in the UK in recent weeks. And we all know what's happening in Dublin at the moment. It really is quite simple, actually. You reap what you sow. 